Hi, I'm Pamela Anderson Lee with PETA. You might not think about it every time you get dressed, but every time you put on a pair of shoes, a belt, or a pair of gloves, chances are you're wearing leather. And out of all the things that animals are abused for, leather is the most common. Do you ever wonder where it comes from? I don't think people really think about everything that goes into the making of like leather and all that stuff. You know, they don't think twice about it. When I go to a boutique and I look at a beautiful leather jacket that feels very soft and buttery, no. And I'm an animal lover, and I feel very guilty about this. I imagine like the cows going into like a factory, like one after the other, and then they come out and they like these little strips. I actually never knew cows were a part of the leather trade. How do you think cows are treated in the leather trade? Uh, I think if I thought about that, that I probably wouldn't wear it. <laughs> I just try to, it's not on my conscience. Leather is produced in many different countries, but much of it comes from India. How do you think cows are treated in India? I thought yeah, cows are treated like people in India. I thought that they're given a lot of respect. Their belief in the sacredness of the cow means that they're treated like gods, so they wouldn't be killed. I thought they were sacred. In India, cows have been held in high esteem from the earliest of times. Mm -hmm. They are seen as the symbol of motherhood and givers of life. But now, thousands of these animals are being killed every week. Why? Not just for meat. Although what little flesh they have on their bones is mostly exported to the Arab states, the big demand is from the United States and Europe, and it is for their skin. Most poor families in rural India sell their cattle after receiving assurances that the animals will live out their lives on farms. Perhaps the corrupt leather trade's first blatant lie. At auction, young cattle, many of them too young to be legally sold, are separated from their mothers and put up for sale alongside water buffalo, bulls, and old dairy cows. Because cattle slaughter is forbidden in most of India, the animals are forced on a death march to one of the few states in this huge country where they can be legally killed. To say the ordeal is stressful doesn't begin to describe it. To prepare for their long march, many cattle have shoes nailed to their feet. A rope is threaded through their noses to keep the animals together. Sometimes the frightened cattle tug against one another and the rope rips their noses apart. The animals are beaten mercilessly with sticks. A closer look shows that the hair stands on end from fear and exhaustion. The cattle are forced to walk, sometimes for days, through the heat and dust and are not given food or water. It is no wonder many of them collapse. But instead of receiving help, the animals who fall actually have chili peppers and tobacco rubbed into their eyes and have the bones in their tails repeatedly broken in an effort to get them on their feet. Chili? Hey, what do you say as a doctor? What's the condition? She's very, very poor. She's dehydrated, she's emaciated, she's weak, she can barely stand. I doubt she's going to be able to walk at all. What means that chili in the eyes for the cow? That's just to perk her up. That's just, that, that doesn't do anything to help her. It just makes her a lot a more alert like that. Do you think it's painful? Yes, it's very painful. Cattle's painful journey worsens when they reach a border because transporting them across state lines for slaughter is illegal. They are loaded into trucks under the cover of darkness. Border guards are bribed to allow the trucks through. Then the confused cattle are forced back onto the road to continue the death march. When the cattle are unloaded, there are no ramps. It is difficult for the animals to see. 
Handlers forced them to jump from the bed of the truck or scramble down steep embankments. The cattle routinely suffer serious injuries, such as broken pelvises, legs, ribs, and horns. Some of the cattle are dead upon unloading, and live animals are often trapped beneath their bodies. You're probably thinking there ought to be a law. Well, there is. But it's no match for the bribes, corruption, or Western demand for cheap leather. The Constitution of India prohibits the slaughter of cows and calves, and the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act mandates humane treatment for all animals. India's trucking laws for cattle are excellent, but almost never enforced. Oh, man. And she can't get up on something. Be careful. Oh, man, it's she's, broken. she's in broken. Pain. They've been breaking her tail, trying to make her get up. What's that for? This is the painkiller they use. Okay, so you're going to see they have two or three loads. In India, it is illegal to slaughter milk-giving cows and little calves like this one. Yet workers ignore the law. Hmm. It's illegal to slaughter a cow and press a young cow. A produ producing cow. It's illegal. And while Indian law allows no more than six cattle per truck, two or three times that number vie for standing room. Overcrowding causes the animals to inadvertently gouge and blind each other with their huge horns. And the babies and the weaker animals often fall and are smothered or trampled. Handlers twist the necks and yank the nose ropes of the others to force them off the truck. From all over India, cattle arrive at slaughterhouses like this one. By the time they are unloaded, half have collapsed from injury or exhaustion or are dead. Here, you see injured and dying animals strewn across the grounds. Animals like this are left in the hot burning sun without water, food, or medical care. As hard as it is to watch, slaughter is actually the only relief these animals get. Cattle are often killed in full view of one another. The cattle are supposed to be killed in the halal manner, but the required quick slice across the throat with a sharp knife is often replaced by hacking and sawing with a dull blade. Skins from these animals go to tanneries where they are treated with chemicals such as chromium and other toxins to stop decomposition. These deadly substances find their way into surrounding water sources used for drinking and cooking. Experts have linked tannery pollution to the high incidence of leukemia and cancer for Indians, including poor children and families who work in and live near leather factories. Little by little, word is spreading. There are groups in India opposed to cattle slaughter. Some citizens actually stop cattle trucks, summon the police, and seize the animals. Jane monks protest outside of one slaughterhouse every day, but their public prayers have fallen on deaf ears.
PETA president, Ingrid Newkirk, was able to rescue a few worn out and collapsed animals who now enjoy life in a sanctuary. The United Kingdom, Germany, and the United States have to take responsibility because they are the three main importers of leather goods from India and from Indian cows. That's where you come in. You see, leather from Indian cattle makes its way to clothing stores around the world, even those in your town. Some of it is even marked, made in India. But you can't always tell. If Indian leather is exported to Italy, for example, and made into a pair of shoes, it may end up marked, made in Italy. I'm just asking you, why don't we, the public, know this? I mean, why don't I know it as a consumer? You, you know, and if I buy a leather coat, I'm not going to see on the back, this uh, garment was made by a cow that was slaughtered and chili peppers in the eyes. And the, uh, I'm shocked by it. I'm saddened by it because I, I love animals, I revere animals, and I thought, uh, I, I feel like I'm duped. Want to know something? I put on this leather jacket today, right? It's a beautiful leather jacket. And I know that there are uh, um, people that don't like people wearing furs or leather in New York. I had that one through my mind. You actually thought about that one? I thought about it before I got dressed with this leather jacket, yes. So do you think these days people are becoming more aware that? Yes, I do. I, do. I mean, I just believe that it comes a step in evolution where, I mean, we, we can fabricate clothing, synthetic fabrics, we can fabricate food, and, um, you know, we have the means, it's just time to do it. I mean, I still wear leather just out of tradition, but, I mean, it, there comes a time when, you know, maybe we can push past it. Please. Think twice when buying your next jacket, pair of gloves, or belt. To learn how you can help, call PETA. Thank you.